<clears throat> hey, everybody. Hey, Sue. Let me get out of here. It's been a crazy last 12 hours. Yeah, not even 24. Last night, Ricky and I did a thing with David Mancuso for PIQF for Pacific International uh, Alive. That was at 8. And then I just got back from a guild in uh, Texas, Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas. So now I'm here with you guys. I'm getting, I'm cramming a week's worth of quilting all into one thing for Pete's sakes. Okay, the big news. I voted. I voted. If you haven't voted, go vote. Because let me tell you the gift that, hey Barbara, the gift that you're going to give yourself is that when those ads come on, you can just tune them out. And uh, I mean, every single ad is political, right? And so I voted, I took it to the post office, and yay, I see something I need over there for our lesson today. Okay, good deal. So let's take a look at a couple quilts. And I have things a little bit out of order, so um, forgive me if I'm, no, I got it. I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. Okay, so I went to the forum, and I went to um, la <clears throat> latest subjects. <coughs> I'll tell you if you need to call in the paramedics, okay? There we go. Um, and these are three quilts that I saw today. So this one is Charlene's, and Charlene wants a critique on it. Charlene, I don't even know what to say. It's great. Um, the only thing I would say is that I wish I could. I wish I could point at this. Um, let's go on on the left hand side and scoot down to the basket with the white white background, and then scoot to the right. You've got that color there, that pink, which is lovely. And you've got it down on the bottom right hand side too. Make sure that color jumps out and I adore it. So you don't need to put a ton more in, but you're going to want to make sure that you're going to want it in at least one more or two more times. And it looks as if you're ready to sew this thing together. And so I would make sure that that color is like in the upper left hand corner border either on the top or the side or maybe both places but i think this is great you've got a balance of light and dark you've got some mediums in there um this is looking very patriotic to me hapu hapu i love these names okay so fabulous absolutely fabulous and what she posted was basically that she had figured out the math work on it and this is where, as I get older, it's like, oh. So I, I adore the way that you are mimicking the handles on that outside edge. I think that's fabulous. And I wish I knew what you were doing in that basket. I can't quite tell if it's braided purse, if it's dimensional. Oh, but I'm also just noticing, and let's, let's pretend this is a clock. At 10 o'clock and 11 o'clock, you have smaller baskets, but you're filling in the space with half square triangles and strips of fabric. That's why this thing is called a puzzle. Let's see. Let's go here. Oh, huh, that's weird. Okay, let me let me back out of all this. Something, I think you're looking at my screen and that's just not any good. I may need to call John in here. What the heck is going on? Zoom. Wait, I'm not doing Zoom. I'm telling you, I'm exhausted. <laughs> but it's, it's such a good... Yeah, but why... Here, hold on. There we go. Something else came... So you didn't see my desktop? Oh, how weird. Okay. Um, so this is Quilt Dolls, right? Yeah. Now, Quilt Dolls, you've got some chops because I think those little baskets are like two inches or three or something. Wow. I couldn't do that. Um, also, those pointy basket handles are really interesting. I have not seen that pattern, and I don't know if that's something that you've made up or or not. Uh, super cool. I want to talk about last Wednesday. Somebody was saying that they were working. 
it looked like they were working with Edita's blues. You know, a lot of us are in the pinks, but some of us are in the blues. And I'm sorry, I can't remember your name. And it was like, I'm, I'm wanting to add color in. And I said, you know, be really careful about that, okay? So then I talked about this sample of mine that is blue and white, monochromatic. And then I threw in a little dash of yellow, and that's a triad, a tertiary on the outside edge to give it a pop, and it's absolutely fabulous. And I mentioned that on Wednesday. But if we go to Edita's stuff here, if you were to throw in a hot yellow, it would not resonate at all. It would not be good. So what I did was I went to my stash, I mean look at this, right before I started, and I pulled out this gold. And so if I wanted to throw in a little shot of something like this, that would be okay. But I kind of wanted to correct my voice on when I said about the yellow. I mean, if you look at it, there's little dots, little dots in here, but where's the big, like here? It's beautiful, but be careful if you're doing a one color quilt, if you start introducing color, just be really, really careful because I'm telling you, they're beautiful quilts as, as they are. <coughs> and it could kind of screw things up in my humble opinion. So what we're doing today, <coughs> grab some peanuts before this, uh, not professional. What we're gonna celebrate today is the cherry basket, which I absolutely love this block. Let's take a look, see here. Um, we know how we know how to do our little triangles. Um, if you are going to scale them down, that's fine for accuracy. If you want to go an eighth above, and let's just see for fun. Let's see. Let's twelve. Let's do twelve inches. B is two and seven eighths. You'd make it three. And that means you would end up trimming to two and a half. Barbara Black, help me out. <coughs> I gotta do the math on this and it's not going well as I'm choking to death. But anyways, if you wanna upscale and trim down, feel free. I also, for the handle, um, <clears throat> I did not have a template at that time. You do have a template that you guys can get off the website. Um, I came in three inches, I came down three inches, and I came over three inches. The handle is cut at one and a quarter. And if you don't know how to do the handle, please watch Wednesday's edition because I go through how to do this and I have some very, very, very important tips, all right? So what I'm gonna show today is how to sew down the handle by machine, but before we do that, I want to go just through some cautions when it comes to um, when it comes to putting putting this together. So let me go down to the bottom because there are some cautions, big time. I love the cherry basket. It's 12 inches. I just love it, and I love the scrappiness of it. Um, I, the one that's up here above my shoulder, I got some beiges in there. It's just, mm, yeah, love it. So here's what we're working with, all right? We're working with when we're making the back when we're making the basket, a bunch of half square triangles. Now, if you bought my book that has the cherry, oh, for crying out loud, that has the cherry basket pattern in it, I probably would have handled it differently than what's going on here. But in the pattern, in the book that we love that we're using, these are all exposed biases. So you know that's when the red flags start going up. It all gets down to the pressing big time. So you can see here, I've sewn it in rows and now I have to put those little top triangles on. So do all your rows, do the pinning techniques that I have been teaching you and get, and get it together. So let's talk about that one little crazy piece up there that I have circled. What I did was you take the square, half square triangle, you sew on one of the triangles, the upper edge, you carefully press, and I'll show that in a moment, and then you sew on the other. <clears throat> and then what you're, well, I'll show you right here rather than talk about it. We know that that is an exposed bias edge. 
So my number one, my pressing surface is super firm. You know, don't use like layers of towels and stuff like that because you will stretch that bias. Note how the iron is going up and going off just like that. Oh, by the way, I mentioned Wednesday, I did get myself a new iron and um, it's the Panasonic, mine, mine broke and it's turquoise. We do have them in the store now. They weren't in the store on uh, Wednesday or they hadn't been put up yet. All right, so let's go to, what's that? Okay, pressing. Oh, sorry about that, guys. Get rid of that. And so then once you sew on the handle, and again, if you missed Wednesdays, you must go watch that. Go to the front page of thequiltshow.com and scroll down and watch the lesson that we did on Wednesday. The key component is that it must be stay stitched, that background. You can barely see it there because I've done it in white. And then I show how to sew on the handle half by machine, well, both by machine, okay? So half of it is kind of like applique on and then you iron it and then I'm gonna show you how, or sewn on, I'm sorry. You, you guys are getting the leftovers of my whirlwind tour in the last 12 hours. <laughs> and then I'm not going to stay stitch those little triangles that I'm angsting over. I'm just gonna handle it with kid gloves and understand that the piece, you're gonna have to kind of just have a minutia that puts them both together. So um, anyways, let's talk about sewing on the handles. Are you guys good for that? Okay, Sherry just said, what about sizing up to four triangles to avoid bias on the long edge? Okay, Sherry, what you're getting into is how I did it in my book that's differently. You're right. Let me go back down here. And I don't, you guys, I do not want to complicate the situation. But where those triangles were, I did quarter square triangles. So that top edge um, would be on straight grain. But in this format and using this book, I just thought it's just going to confuse the issue. So if you know, if, if you're thinking that's what I'm going to do, that's fine. Just understand I'm not teaching it that way because it would people's brains would just go like that. Okay? So let's get down to our other little camera and take a look at what we're doing. Cutting accurately is really important too. Yeah, no kidding. And again, if you don't have this book, I would just commission you to get it. There's so many great things in here. So many. So here we go. Let me even bring it in closer so we take a look here. You can, <clears throat> what I taught you on Wednesday, is you don't have to sew down these this basket handle until you feel like it. You can move on to the next one, move on to the next one, and then come back to this and then do your sewing. You got a couple choices. First of all, this is a, a default blanket stitch on, on my Vernina. And let's say you were doing something that you wanted it to look really folky and stuff like that. Maybe you'd want to use um, a different a contrasting color thread or whatever. That is a design element. But when I'm working with finished edge applique, which is what this is, I prefer to have my stitches go away. And that's what I'm going to show you how to do today. The first thing we need to talk about is thread. Um, I like to use a finer thread. This is my 80 weight. It is a polyester and it plays like silk. Not to tempt you, but I want you to be aware that we have this these pre-round bobbin rings in the 80 weight in the store and it's good for hand, hand uh, applique as well as machine applique. Oh gosh, here comes Vero. There she go. Okay. I don't think this is good. The iron's hot. There we go, baby. There we go. Um, you can just put this on the top of your machine and just act as if it's a spool of thread. So if you're into applique, this might be a really good Christmas present or a present for yourself right now. I'm not quite sure how much it runs. So I have every spool of color. Of course I do because it's Quilter Select, my stuff. But another, and again, 80 weight. Another thing you could consider is, if you don't want it to show, is these are uh, some 
polyester clear threads and we have these at Quilter Select too. I know um, Superior has it. I'm, I'm, I forget who else, but the bottom line is, is you want a polyester and it's often called monopoly. You don't want monofilament. The monopoly will act and play like a polyester. And if you have a smoke and you have a clear, you're good to go. Now, some people are just adverse to using this, but that isn't that is an option. All right. So I have I'm going to take off the camera and go back to me. I'm going to reposition this and I'm going to show you. Actually, I'm going to show you on my machine what I'm doing as far as settings and stuff like that. And then you can um, just do with what you need to do on your machine. I just can only show you what I know how to do. Some machines come with a really beautiful default little stitch. On mine, I, there, I think we can do that. I think that'll work, you guys, right? Okay, it's upside down, so that's when I go like this. Okay. Huh, I'll be darned, there you go. So, on my machine, I am working on a Bernina 765. On many of the Berninas, we have what I call the quilter's playground. And it's right down here, and it's right there. On some of the machines, it's hidden. The upshot is I'm gonna to go to the quilter's playground, which is right here, and I'm going to work with the blanket stitch, all right? So on your machine, if you're not on a Bernina and they don't have a stitch that you love for your applique, you might consider doing what I'm doing. So I'm going to touch that, and you can see that the default has come up here. Now, what I want to do is I like to work with this foot. This is an open toe embroidery foot. It, on a Bernina, it's a 20, okay? And on it, let's say if you're on another machine, I don't know what it is, but look for something that's open so you can see what the heck you're doing, all right? Then what I'm going to do, and um, a, Libby and Ricky didn't do this, I like to justify this all the way to the right-hand side so that I can use the interior of this foot as my guide. Um, Libby and Ricky, I learned this at the Super Seminars, they could just eyeball it in the center. I need all the help I can get. So in order to do that, I'm going to take my needle and move it over. See how it's moving over there? Then I want to change, now if I wanted to do the stuff that shows, you could just go with that right there. I want to do the stuff that's smaller, this is what I do. So, and again, you've got to play with your machine. We have beautiful machines at our fingertips and they're yours to experiment and play with. What I'm going to do is I'm going to lengthen the stitch to about, oh gosh, a 320. It's arbitrary, all right? Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the width and I'm going to make it really small. You might want to start with a 1.0. I'm a show off. I can get down to about here. And then that is going to be my stitch. Now the other thing I'm going to do is how do you stop start this? How do you secure the stitches? Rather than go back and forth like a reverse, I'm going to pick one of these top stitches, just for grins, I'm picking that one, the middle one. Again, I'm going to move the stitch all the way to the right hand side and I'm going to shrink it up. Whoa, I don't want to zigzag it. I'm gonna shrink it up. You see the number getting smaller and smaller? To a .05. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to toggle back and forth between those two stitches. Now, if you have a Bernina, again, I'm sorry you guys, it's what I know. If I turn off my machine, it goes bye-bye, what I've just done. I can put it in my favorites. I don't know how to do that, but your dealer can help you. But like, let's say I'm all set up and ready to go, but it's supper time. I can put it on what's called eco mode and it just kind of goes to sleep. 
and then when I come back, it's there ready to go. All right, let's talk about now. Again, I'm, you know, I'm gonna get a job as a camera operator one day. That's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> Make sure the cord's not in the way. Guys, got any big plans for this weekend? I do. Lennox is turning six, and we're gonna have a little pizza party at their house, so that'll be fun. Okay, so we've got this. Don't forget to change your throat plate back because you guys know that I'm a real strong proponent if you're doing piecing to use a single hole. Well, that's a real easy way to break a needle. So I'm gonna put this on. Okay, get in there. And I'm gonna put on the um, dual feed. Now, to tell you the honest truth, I'm okay, I'm doing this in the dark. Because if I turn on, that's not good. If I turn on, oh, that's okay. If I turn, there we go. If I turn on the camera, I mean, the machine light is going to just glare out. So can you see that the needle is all the way to the right? I think so. All right, I'm also using a dark green thread, and that's just so simply you can see it, all right? I would probably use a very fine neutral here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use that little straight stitch. Oh, I also want needle down. And if you have hover mode, get that on. So I'm gonna take a couple little stitches. Okay. Then I'm going to go back to the blanket stitch that I have fiddled with. So I'm gonna just scoot along the inside of this foot right here. And you go on the outside except the bite. Now, when it's time to turn, you do it when you're on the outside, not on the inside. That especially becomes important if you're doing a full-blown blanket stitch. If you don't do, if you do it on the inside, you'll end up with a V. Oh my God, these are so much fun. If I were doing a scrap one of these, I probably would just put in the uh, polyester mono poly at 100 weight. Whoop, that's off a little bit. Again, I'm sewing in the dark, you guys, but I am a trained professional. Boy, I had fun with that Texas Guild this morning. Just what a great group of women. And what a wonderful way that we can, you know, to think I was at Macuso's last night and then in Texas this morning and with you all over the world right now, it's, it's amazing. Okay, so now I'm coming to the end. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to that little straight stitch that I defaulted and I'm just gonna go, and that's it. That's how easy it is. And then you can just go and sew the rest or sew it together. So um, learning to do this is a gift to yourself. Trust me. Uh, after we do our Christmas special uh, quilt, which I'll be talking about pretty soon, Christmas or Hanukkah, or you can even do a spring quilt, I don't care. It's just gonna be a real fun down and dirty. It's not gonna look down and dirty, but it is down and dirty quilt that we're gonna do. Uh, Hanukkah, flowers, I don't care. I'm gonna go through, after that, my brain is fried. Um, after that, I'm going to, we're gonna go through a whole applique session. Uh, everything from fusible to finished applique, to all of that so that if it's not in your tool belt, we can get it in your tool belt. Okay, so let's talk about Monday. Okay, please forward, uh, okay, he's gonna have to bring me something. Um, well, this is what we're gonna do on Monday, guys, is we are gonna talk about sewing this together and over here, way over here, see that little strip of fabric there that's under the flower? Right there. Ah. Again, I cannot be the weatherman, right there. 
On Monday, we're gonna talk about sewing it together and also if you run out of fabric, how you can piece it together so no one's the wiser. Because I found when I was putting mine together, right that little strip right there, I had very little of that fabric in my kit, but I could piece it together and you will never know. So we'll do that little uh, dirty cheat on Monday, okay? Okay, will you show us how you insert that cherry basket block into your quilt? Hope you will show us how you inset that cherry basket. I'm putting it together like a jigsaw puzzle. The only areas I'm putting this thing together that was an issue was right here. That was it. And that was a partial seam. I just work in neighborhoods. So like this, I piece this together and then I piece this together. You, you have to look at it like a jigsaw puzzle. And because you are working in multiple sizes. Would the handles look okay if we use some de decorative stitches on our machines? Of course they would. Of course, that's the beauty of this. I bring my I bring my threads to the back and simply tie them off. Okay, Joanne, that's interesting. When I am machine quilting, I worry about everything being super clean. Um, on here, with this green, where well, you can't really see, I will just clip it and it will go away. But however you do it and however it works for you, do it, okay? That's what's so great, you guys. It's 10,000 ways to do this. The big handle is one and a quarter by 13. The big handle is one and a quarter by 13. And then again, if you didn't see it, go watch it on Wednesday. Barbara Black, God, I love you, Barbara Black. Um, the finish size, so two and seven eighths, round up to three, then trim to two and a half for the half square triangle. We'll finish it too. God, I love you, Barbara. I mean, my brain is usually bad enough, but today, I gotta tell you, okay, so at eight o'clock last night, guys, I go to bed at 7.30. <laughs> so, but at least I voted, so I could just go to sleep. And then I get all whipped up, because I get all excited about being with you. And then I can't sleep. And then we did the Texas this morning, and then I get all whipped up. And um, now we're doing this. I have the feeling I'm just going to go horizontal this afternoon. But John and I are going to go get our flu shots. Is the basket handle raw edge on the side with the blanket stitch? Yes. Go watch Wednesday. Go watch Wednesday. Just scrub through, and I will show you how to do that. Okay? Um, so, I think, wow, 1029, right on. Um, I'm going to make sure John doesn't have anything else. Yep, here he comes. Are you using Y seams? I'm you no. What I'm doing with that block up there that I was talking about, it's called, um, what's it called? An, a continuous seam. It's when you, come on, Barbara, help me out here. That's how my brain is fried. What's it called? A continuous? It's how to do a block without doing a Y seam. But, but when things don't all go together, fine. All right. No Y seams in this one. Laura Davis, watching dirt. Oh, Laura. Okay, you guys. Okay, we're all going to wrap our love to Laura Davis right now. Okay. I want you all to put Laura Davis in your mind. Partial seams. Thank you, Nancy. Put da Laura Davis. Dora's wa uh, Laura's watching during chemo right now we're with you girl we're with you we are with you so glad you've chosen to come with us so anyways guys um monday we'll do whatever i said we were going to do i'm gonna go get a flu shot and go watch um oh i haven't i have a new thing i'm watching on uh hulu little fires everywhere it's pretty good it's one of reese witherspoon's um things she's amazing what she's doing the first episode is a little bit slow and then it's pretty darn good it is pretty darn good see we're with you Laura we are with you but that's who we are as quilters you guys so have a lovely lovely weekend so and um, we'll see you Monday ciao